This is going to be a real quick video to talk about how to fix gaps. So you go through your routine and you draw something out that is awesome. And I'm going to make just something really awesome. Right now, pull that over. I'm going to actually turn snap on for a change because I want those to just touch. So there's our awesome. Something awesome. Now, on top of that something awesome, we're going to make a nice, beautiful little trinket. Something like that. There is our beautiful, beautiful little trinket. I want that to be cut away. You know the routine. I'm going to duplicate, control D. Shift click to multiply, multiple select and difference. Grab back a hold of that, duplicate, shift click, path, difference. Out, standing. So there's our cutaway. A couple of things that I want to set. I'm going to set both of these the same. So we'll go into params. We have both of them selected. We're going to hit the params and we're going to do a Spacing between rows of two, we're going to running stitch length two. We're going to do an autofill row spacing of two. Isn't that parody? All right. Now we're going to go into this one. Probably going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, definitely going to do a spacing of two, uh, running stitch length of two, auto under, under low, under lay row spacing two. So, yeah, same thing. All right, we're going to duplicate both of those, drag that duplicate down. And on the duplicate, I'm going to go back into those, into that setting, the, our beautiful little egg looking thing setting. And I'm going to change the stitch angle to a 90 degree angle. I'm going to stitch this out and we're going to look at the gaps difference between the two of them. And I'm going to do it on just a kitchen towel, just like I usually do. We should end up with gaps all the way around. And then we're going to talk about how to fix those gaps when I get back. So until then, pause. Okay. This is our stitching. Notice that the top one, the gap between the left block, the egg and the right block, the gap in between there is more then the gap in the second example. And all I did was change the direction of the stitching in the egg. That's it. So we're going to do one more. We're going to take what we already have. I'm going to remove one of these. Which I'm going to have to ungroup. So bear with me while I ungroup. Pretty simple. So now I want to remove one of these. So now in this one, we're going to go, let's see. Actually, I need to select all three objects. Go into extensions, ink stitch, params. I'm going to, we already have spacing between rows two. We're going to change the, the angle of stitching to a 90 degree angle. That's all we're going to change on those. Hit apply and quit. On the egg, we're going to go back into params. And we're going to set expand. We're going to set expand by 0.1. And all that does is make the object bigger by 0.1 millimeters. It's not much. But a lot of times it doesn't take much. 
hit apply and quit. Let's go stitch this one out and see what happens. Let's recap what we have here. And this is my third item stitched out. And notice that it no longer has a gap in between objects. So, in the first one, all three items are stitching horizontally. Your pull happens in the direction of your stitch. So all three items are pulling horizontally away from each other. In the second example, the boxes are stitching horizontally, so they're pulling away from they are pulling away from anything in a horizontal field to them, which is the egg in this case and and in between them is you know pulling away from boxes themselves. I didn't say that very fluidly, but I hope you understand. The egg, however, is not on a horizontal stitch, so it's not pulling away from the boxes horizontally. And you can see that the gap is less. In the third example, I turn the stitch direction on all three objects to vertical. So they are not pulling away from any of the three objects are not pulling away from each other at all. I did make the egg 0.1 millimeter bigger effectively using the params expand. That does effectively make that object ever so slightly bigger. You may have to do that. In some cases, you may have to. If I had objects above or below, now that I'm stitching vertically, the pull will happen vertically. So if I had an item above or below any of these items, they would theoretically be a gap between them because now they're, now they're pulling away from anything above or below them. So that's... So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing that affects how much pull you get in a fabric is the fabric itself. I'm stitching on a kitchen towel that's pretty stiff. If I'm stitching on a t-shirt, on a cotton knit t-shirt, it's going to move a little more. So the, the effect is going to be actually a little worse on a t-shirt. If I'm stitching on a vinyl safety vest, those things don't move. The effect would be very minimal, even without some kind of a backing or stabilizer holding it still. I'd still use a stabilizer on it, but the effect would still be minimal, even without it. However, there's not just the fabric. It's the stabilizer. How much stabilizer are you using? What kind of stabilizer? Is it mesh? Is it tearaway? Is it uh, sticky? Are you putting a spray sticky on it to make it even better? Just there's so many different variables involved that I can't give you a this works option. You saw firsthand that change in the direction, just the direction of the stitch can change how much gap you have or how much effective pull that you have between two objects. If you have two objects and you have them stitching you have them side by side and you're stitching horizontally, that means you're pulling both objects away from each other. And in this case, you had three objects that were all three objects were pulling away from each other. So you, you I showed you how to fix that in that case. Um, there's not a simple answer. There's too many variables involved. Hopefully this will help you to minimize that pull effect because you think you have a perfect item and then you go to stitch it and there's all these gaps involved. It's like, why did this happen? Well, I'm hoping that this video will show you why that happens and some ways to minimize it, maybe get rid of it. If I had a really complicated object, I might have to go in here and actually adjust some nodes. I might have to pull these nodes away, you know, overlap, something like this. And then again on this side, you know, do the same thing in reverse you know, over here. That's, that's an extreme example, but you might have to do something like that. Let me show you really, really quick another little trick you can do when you're doing your difference, your cutaway difference. If you come in here, what I always say is you duplicate, you shift click, it says multi-select, 
and then your difference that gives you a hole what you can also do is do a shift click i mean do a uh, a duplicate now we have now we have uh this is a duplicate object and on that duplicate i'm going to go into path path effects i'm going to hit path effects do an offset and do my offset smaller i'm going to change the color of that object so we can see now i have a slightly smaller object than my original round object so now that it's slightly smaller now i can select the outside the main background path do my difference and now my difference my cutaway hole is just ever so oops slightly smaller ever so slightly smaller than the circle that i have above it because i did the duplicate and when the path effects made that object ever so slightly smaller so that is a trick that can help too just another thing to complicate the waters even more now you have another option but you're getting the gaps because of a pull, pull and push and pull effect even on fill stitch it happens so i hope this video helps and that's that's it for now thanks for watching